Coming up on West Dakota Fox News at 9. A heroic rescue from a burning building. Plus, there could be changes coming to who receives your loan checks. But first, the final leg of a presidential visit in Asia kicks off with a show of military strength and a handshake seen round the world. This is West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Molly Martinez and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. President Trump is wrapping up what has been his longest international trip since taking office. Reporter Doug Luzotter says has the highlights and a meeting that is raising some questions. This show of solidarity among world leaders at an economic summit in the Philippines may have looked better on paper, but even if the execution was a little awkward, the president has been bragging about the U.S. economy. Not everyone was happy with the president's visit. Earlier today, demonstrators burned a mock-up of Trump in the streets of Manila. The effigy showed Trump's face with four arms in the shape of a swastika, each holding bombs, guns, and other weapons. At one point, police began using water cannons on the protesters. Well, time now for our first check on weather with meteorologist Henry Blakes. Hey, we've been on the foggy side. Thank you, Henry. A Burley County woman faces drug charges and child neglect charges after police found meth and marijuana in her home. A deputy pulled over 46-year-old Tamara Walth over the, uh, on Thursday, which led to the house search the next morning. Three children were inside the home. And officers in Walsh County say a woman died this morning in a rollover crash just south of Minto. It happened around 7.40 a.m. on 150th Avenue Northeast. Police say the road conditions were icy, which may have been a factor in the crash. They say the car careened over a riverbank before flipping into the ice. The car came to rest submerged underwater. According to reports, the driver died on scene. Her identity has not yet been released. And Pembina County deputy is resigning after falling asleep at the wheel and wrecking his squad car. Officers say it wasn't Joshua Rao's first strike. He had been suspended before for texting and driving, speeding, inconsistencies in his reports, and failing to turn on his camera. Rao submitted his resignation on November 3rd. Well, two Indiana men arrested last week in Minot on drug charges made their first court appearances today. Minot police arrested 26-year-old Patrick Sullivan and 27-year-old Joseph Mayer on an Amtrak train last Thursday. The pair was booked for possession of marijuana with intent to deliver. Police say they were carrying more than five pounds of pot. Both men remain in custody. And a Bismarck man arrested last month for sexually abusing a child now faces charges of child pornography. Investigators say they found videos and images on 32-year-old Andrew Glasser's laptop. The court ordered Glasser not to have any contact with minors, and he must stay within the Burley and Morton counties. The Bismarck Police Department is getting a $2,800 grant from the North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation. The hope is to improve the sex offender tracking system. Here's how it will work. Offenders will be put through a two-fingerprint identification process. That information will be logged and stored in a BCI database. A lot of us in records are the ones that do the registration, and then we have to rely on somebody else tracking them down and having the time available to print them, where now they don't have to leave our little room that we do the registration in because we can do the fingerprint scan right there. The Bismarck City Commission will decide tomorrow if police can move forward with the new system. And the Bank of North Dakota is getting out of the federal student loan business. Today, they transferred thousands of federal loans to the North Texas Higher Education Authority. Reporter Cynthia McLaughlin explains what it could mean for you. Meantime, President Trump is nominating former pharmaceutical executive Alex Azar for Secretary of Health and Human Services. Azar will fill a role vacated by Tom Price. Price resigned in September after revelations that he took repeated trips on government and private jets. Those trips ended up costing taxpayers more than a million dollars. Senate Republicans have enough votes to push the nomination forward, though Democrats are expected to put up a fight, given Azar's big pharma background. Also in pharmaceutical news, Salt Lake County officials announced today they're taking legal action against opioid manufacturers. The county is the latest in a series of lawsuits against drug makers. Today, district attorney said Big Pharma is profiting on people's pain and suffering the way drug cartels do. They also say the epidemic cost the state in excess of $500 billion a year. Cameras were rolling as a woman rescues two toddlers from a burning building. 
The fire broke out in an apartment complex in Texas Saturday. The flames quickly spread to multiple units. You can hear neighbors yelling as the woman bolts out of the building carrying the two children. This was minutes before crews arrived. Both the children and first responders suffered minor injuries. The Beaumont Fire Department says at least 50 units were impacted by the blaze. Authorities say the fire was started by kids playing with a lighter. And an investigation is underway after a shooting in the parking lot of an Ohio hospital. It happened this afternoon at the Affinity Medical Center outside of Cleveland. Investigators believe the shooter approached a doctor and opened fire before turning the gun on himself. There's a growing bipartisan chorus tonight calling for Judge Roy Moore to drop out of the Alabama Senate race. It comes amid allegations that Moore preyed upon young girls throughout his career. Moore has vehemently denied these accusations. It comes just weeks before a special election to fill a vacancy left by Jeff Sessions. The GOP was banking on that seat in order to pass tax reform, but now some Republicans want Moore out. Or do you believe these allegations to be true? I believe the women, yes. Well, I was not a Roy Moore fan even before these allegations surfaced, but I do think he should drop out of the race. I believe the people of Alabama deserve better choices. A few hours ago, a fifth woman came forward accusing Moore of attacking her when she was 16. McConnell says the party is now looking for a write-in candidate to replace Moore.